Hi, this is Bruce at FighterKiteCentral.com and I've uh, decided I would make a kite uh, that I've never made before using materials that I've never used before for making this particular type of kite. I'm going to make a buka, but I'm going to use bamboo for all the spars and I'm going to use paper since I learned how to waterproof it a little bit, I'm going to use a piece of this tissue paper as the skin. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just video uh, the process here and we can kind of together <laughs> find out what works <laughs> and what doesn't. Uh, what I did to start with is I made a, a bow, which is the leading edge spar, the width of the kite and uh, you can make the kite any width. I decided to make it about uh, 16 and a half or 17 inches wide. It's going to be a light wind kite and it's about a foot uh, tall. It isn't critical, the dimensions, you know, be exact. A ratio of two units of, of height of the kite versus three units of width is a pretty standardized way bukas are uh, built, no matter what the dimension of the unit you use, um, a 3 to 2 ratio is a pretty safe bet. Now this one is slightly off of that, but I'm sure it'll fly fine. Uh, at least it'll fly well enough for me. Uh, so I made the bow, which is the leading edge spar, and I just made it so that it was relatively uniform when it bent. Because when the uh, tension line applies the uh, curve to the leading edge, you want it to be uniform in shape. Otherwise, the kite will veer off to one side or the other, just like a bow in a standard Indian or diamond-shaped kite. The part that I uh, had a little uh, trouble thinking about how best to deal with was the cross spars. Now, in a buka, there are two cross spars that go from corner to corner. And you want those crossbars to be identical in their flex and or stiffness if you want the kite to fly straight when you're, you know, retrieving a line or if you're just flying in a, in a relatively uh, nice breeze. So what I did to uh, create two that are as close as possible to the same is I uh, took this uh, piece of bamboo that I'd used for bow. It's a 24 inch piece of uh, bamboo that I use for a spine or a bow. And I use that by, uh, I, I make the cross section of this almost rectang well, rectangular as I can. And I taper it so that one end, this end, is quite thin and the other end is also rectangular or generally rectangular, but much thicker, so that it tapers in its way that it bends. It bends more more at the at one end than it does at the other when the piece is compressed. And then I decided that once I had that, I would then split it into two pieces so that I'd have two pieces from the same bamboo stick and my assumption is if I split it close to the center if I'm reasonably accurate in my splitting the uh, crossbars will be virtually identical in their stiffness and uh, other characteristics so to split it what I did is I simply took my utility knife but any really sharp knife will work and I eyeballed where the center of this stick was on the thick end. And then I just push the blade straight down and held it into a block of wood and pushed the bamboo stick through the blade to split it, at least to start to split it. After it was started, I held the two loose end, split ends so they wouldn't uh, shift in their positioning and began to pull it from that end so that the uh, 
two pieces would be as close as possible to the same. Now, sometimes the bamboo will wander a little bit, and if it does, you just need to bend it in order to get it back on track. So when I finish this, I have two pieces that are about half the flexibility of the main piece. And that's what I'll use for my crossbars. Now that I've got the crossbars, I cut them to length. And in this case, my kite is actually 16 and a half wide, and the finished kite will be 10 and a half tall. So a little bit different than the 2 to 3 ratio that we talked about earlier. But one of the things I was wondering what to do or how to treat, and that is, how do you, con how do you uh, connect the bamboo spars to each other? Well, traditionally, uh, bamboo traditional kites uh, are bonded by uh, thread or string, light string, flying line, whatever they happen to have. So I decided to use that also in this one. So I'm going to have two. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, ends, I've done this one already, tied for the crossbar directly to the leading edge spar. And I tied the spine to the leading edge spar. And now I'm going to tie the other crossbar to the leading edge spar. And I, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I made a very flat area on the back side of the crossbar. I'm going to put the bamboo skin side against the uh, paper. And I also made a flat area on the end of the leading edge spar so that those two flat surfaces will meet when I tie it and it won't have a tendency to want to rotate around uh, in its own way at some point. And to tie it, since I've never made a kite using line to uh, tie the spars together, I always use glue or some other uh, method, I decided just to take a piece of thread I think it's polyester thread. It's a little bit heavier than regular sewing machine thread, but not much. I made a slip knot, and I decided to tie all the spars together before I bonded the skin to the spars. So I'm going to tie this one. I'm going to do it just to show you what I did. I don't know if this is a good way to do it or not, actually. I'm sure when I fly the kite, I'll find out. <laughs> But I just bond, just tie those two together, and then I wrap them in any way that I think might actually provide uh, a secure connection between the two, the two pieces. And continue to do that a few times. I don't know how much is necessary, really. I'll find out again, probably, after I fly the kite and... Uh, possibly have a failing. So uh, that's what I did. And then I'm going to just tie it and uh, use a couple of half hitches or square knot or whatever kind of knot to finalize it. I may put a drop of super glue on this and each of them just to make sure they uh, don't unravel. I'm not the best knot tire in the world, so uh, that's a possibility, I guess. Oops. So there we have that tied. And uh, so the framework for the kite's already done. And I already cut out the skin. And when I did cut out the skin, I then marked on it. I'm not sure you can see it, but I marked lines where to fold, because I want to hem around the perimeter of the kite. 